Hi, and welcome. In this video, I will update y'all on cross number 9. Against all odds, this cross finally produced Fry. I'll recount the lows and highs of this story leading to the current state of cross 9. For those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Ivan. Starting from phenotypically different guppies, I am documenting my progress of restoring a line that breeds true for the white color of snow white guppies. Crosses 4 and 9 are the most relevant for this video, and the card in the corner will take you to that playlist. As a quick review, cross 9 is a back cross between our white male Gandalf and our C4 females. These females physically look like half-black red guppies. They are likely heterozygous for the sex-linked half-black trait, and the red color is likely from heterozygous expression of the magenta gene inherited from their father. In addition to these traits, these females are also heterozygous gray-based and carriers for European Blau and Storzbach. In the last video on Cross 9, I talked about how this cross only dropped unfertilized eggs and no fry. This was odd, and I went over why I thought this was the case. I gave up and started making plans to move on from this cross, but these females had other plans and surprised me with a drop of fry. So let's start from the beginning. I introduced these females to Gandalf on February 15th. If everything went smoothly, I would have had four and a half month old offspring now, with younger fry from several additional drops from each female. But this didn't happen. Instead, on March 16th, I noticed that one of the females looked like she was giving birth, but all she dropped were unfertilized eggs. Let's call this female C4A. On April 8th, female C4A gave birth to her next batch inside a breeder box, but they were again unfertilized eggs. On April 15th, Female C4B dropped unfertilized eggs in the breeder box too. I started questioning the viability of both the females and Gandalf. So to see if Gandalf had aged out, I introduced a virgin female from cross 5 on April 29th to see if they could produce fry. I've kept all these guppies together in the same tank and noticed additional drops of unfertilized eggs from female C4A on May 7th and June 2nd. Female C4B also dropped fry sometime in early May, but I couldn't get the exact date because I noticed she was simply skinnier rather than dropping fry or eggs. With all these unviable drops one after the other, I gave up and began making plans to move on from this cross and maybe use one of the brothers to the C4 females. Then on June 3rd, I noticed quite a bit of fry that were in a small basket that I kept in the tank and I quickly realized that female C4B gave birth to this brood. I promptly removed the C5 female and Gandalf into their own tank so that I wouldn't mix up their fry if female C5 decided to suddenly start dropping fry of her own. This was super exciting and meant that both Gandalf and these C4 females were still viable, albeit slow. But after taking a closer look, this new brood had quite a bit of fry that were underdeveloped and rested on the bottom of the tray. I hoped that they would develop further in time, but this was short-lived. Checking up on them in the next morning showed significantly less fry in the tank. I suspect that most of the underdeveloped fry were eaten. The rest were hiding in the algae. Another month had gone by like this, and female C4A looked like she was about to drop another batch so I placed her into the breeder box so that I could get a better sense of the health of the entire brood. She dropped her brood on June 23rd, and unfortunately, most of this brood was underdeveloped. However, a few did survive to the next day. Three days later, on June 26th, female C4B also dropped her fry into the breeder box, and this time, there was a significant amount of fry, and most of them looked healthy. What a surprise! After so many months of unsuccessful births, these females unexpectedly produced a viable brood of fry. I immediately started feeding them baby brine shrimp to make sure that they had the healthiest diet I could provide them. 
What a turn of events, right? At the moment, Cross 9 is salvaged, so we could begin anticipating the phenotypes that this brood will produce. Luckily, we don't have to do a super deep dive and analysis of the genotypes for this cross. The C4 females look very similar to the C1A females that produced cross 6. They also carry the same relevant genes. So, I expect we will see a brood that looks very similar to cross 6. I won't have the same numbers of fry as cross 6, so we can't anticipate all 16 phenotypes. But I imagine there will be some interesting males that will either be half black, pink, or white. If you are interested in following along with the rest of the journey for this cross, please consider sticking around and subscribing so you don't miss any future updates. I have a couple more crosses to go over, and an introduction to crosses 10, 11, and 12 will be the focus of the next video. I should have had Fry from cross 10 already, because as I mentioned before, this pair was introduced on April 29th. But as we have seen, Gandalf is slowing down. And this will be the last cross with Gandalf before retiring him. Here are some update clips of cross 8. One of the females is showing some very strong iridescence, and I'm thinking of pairing her to the gray-based white male from cross 7. But we will see. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.